In this presentation, we are looking at how changes in the market and consumer environment are affecting the context of copyright. In general, the digitization of music and video have altered the landscape in which copyright was originally created, and the differences are raising questions for some about the value and use of copyright in today's world. Changes in consumer technology have driven a tectonic shift in consumer behavior. From the copyright perspective, this is no longer the world of the VCR and the LP. In the last two decades, the advent of digital technology changed the landscape. Let's turn to see how things are similar to and different from the world of the past. Let's first consider the LP and MP3. What are the similarities and differences between these two media? Both are a means of recording and playing music. And media can be transferred into different formats and shared with others. For an LP, that meant transfer to magnetic tape. Then the tape itself could be shared with someone else. MP3s can be traded in their current format or converted to another format digitally. There is no medium onto which MP3s need to be converted. Which brings us to the differences between these two media. First, LPs are physical and MP3s are digital. Second, the resale of an LP is pretty straightforward. When it is sold, that medium and all its data, the music, is purchased by someone else who then acquires the permissions to use the LP. In an MP3, the sale is not so easy as it requires someone to delete a song from their player if they give a copy to someone else. That is not as simple as selling the LP. This has led to a difference in how the industry approaches control of its media. Whereas LPs could be used without physical or many legal restrictions, many MP3s have restrictions on use that are legal, contractual, or technological in order to try to control their misuse, specifically the redistribution directly or through online sites. There are also similarities and differences between the VCR and Napster. They are similar in that they are both used to copy and share copyrighted works. Both created revolutions in how people use media. Both introduced new forms of sharing a copy of media. And both, as it turns out, have been controversial. In what ways are they different? The VCR used a physical videotape, which was the only way to duplicate the video content. Transferring the content meant sharing physical media between people. But person-to-person -person sharing sites like Napster provide networked hardware and software solutions that can network many computers, all of which have access to the media stored on the service's servers. This difference leads to the second difference. Where the VCR enabled time shifting, which the Supreme Court ruled fit the characteristics for fair use, the use of person-to-person -person services has been determined to induce software users to commit copyright infringement. That is because of the problem noted earlier with having to delete files if they are shared. Putting a copyrighted file on a third-party computer where it can be downloaded by anyone is a copyright infringement. The impact of digitization has led to what copyright owners call piracy, the illegal acquisition of a copyrighted entity. Here are some statistics which the Record Industry Association of America, or RIA, has presented about the impact of digitization. Since the advent of the MP3 in the late 1990s, there has been a 53% decrease in recorded music sales. 
In just the second half of the last decade, over 30 billion songs were shared on file sharing services, which led to only 37% of all songs actually being paid for in 2009. These services are so popular that they use up 24% of the available global bandwidth as people download audio files. This led to an estimated $12.5 billion loss for music companies annually. The changes in technology have implications for copyright. First, the basic principles of copyright are now being challenged because of our ability to reproduce, edit, and distribute digital works without ever creating a tangible fixed medium. Remember, ideas which are ephemeral cannot be copyrighted. Only when the ideas are put into a fixed medium, like being printed on paper or pressed onto vinyl, can they be protected. This problem is still to be addressed. Beyond the physical distribution of content, questions arise about what it means to create and own content, and what rights the owner may have. It is not clear in some cases who owns the content. Moreover, it is not clear what the content should cost. The cost of producing the first copy of copyrighted materials costs as much or more than ever. However, the cost of reproducing that first copy is practically zero. So, how do you price something that can be expensive to produce, but can so easily be reproduced? Which generates a bigger question of how content of any type can retain its value in today's market. All of these questions are just beginning to be addressed by the organizations in the copyright industries, like publishing, recording, and video production. Answering these questions and others like them will be the topic of other work you will do in this course. And that brings us to the end of this presentation.